Welcome back to Hawkeye Skunk Works and in this video we're finally going to talk about the sleeping platform in the Jeep. So let's get some better lighting and go take a look. saying for quite a while we're going to talk about this we're finally going to today um, um, we're going to take a quick, quick look at it I'm actually going to put it in there um, hopefully in real time so you guys can see exactly what it takes to do and I have the plans all drawn up with measurements and stuff um, that I'll throw in at the end uh, if you want to, guys want to take a look at those plus I can email them to you or I'll probably post them on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that so they will be out there in still form uh, as well. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look. I think we're going to hop into the back seat first. Okay, so I'm sorry if the audio is a little bit worse. I'm outside now and somebody's mowing and I've got my cube camera here. Uh, but it's got a wider angle lens so we're going to get more of this. This is the passenger side seat, uh, rear seat bracket so what this does is so you pop the latch and then you can fold these forward which is what allows you to fold the back seats down now most people that have these WJ's that have the seats in and out quite a bit will do a pin eliminator so all that we'll do is let me pull these out real quick and we'll take a, another look those pins pop the latch and ah, seat comes out Now the main purpose of that will come in later, I will show you, but so all I did was uh, you have to unbolt these hinges the first time, take them out, use a drill bit to drill the, the head of the pin out, um, and then I just used a punch, punched it through, ground off the burrs, and what I used were these um, like hitch pins or something, I got these at Harbor Freight, and I think they were like 250 a piece, you need four of them. Really you can use whatever size you want, and these were goofy diameter like 15 30 seconds I don't know but I used the exact size drill bit of what it was and they fit super snug I was worried that they would uh, rattle um, because it's not a pressed in pin but um, they worked extremely well so we got those out throw those in there we're gonna hop over to the other side real quick pull these pins Side note, you can see I'm, I've got the Rugged Ridge floor mat here. This is a full liner for the back. I got it off Amazon. I think it was like 65 bucks or something like that. Well worth every cent. I couldn't be happier with it. All right, pop that seat and out. And now we will start putting in the sleeping platform. Now you can see I've already got part of it in there. I just left this in there. I've got like a go bag underneath there and I usually keep some tools. And then this side, um, I don't put the platform in just because I usually carry a tool kit and I feel like it sits too high. Like if I were to ever get in an accident, it would go flying through the cabin a little bit worse. And when I've got the dog in there and stuff, it's just, I prefer to have him sitting a little bit uh, lower. So that's why I have it taken apart. Now I will be the first one to admit that this is not a perfect setup. There are several things that I would like to modify in the future, but for the amount of times that I'm actually going to use it, um, it's not that big a deal and we will address those as we go. First thing, we're going to throw on the other back platform. Um, the other half, I'm not going to screw this all together just because I gotta take it all back out anyway to put the seats up, put the girls' car seats back in, so. Um, now I did have to um, kind of freehand cut uh, a notch to make room for the, this. This is the CD changer box where the CD changer would sit. I don't have one, it, this didn't come with a CD changer, but I do have the box just because I use it for storage. Um, it's a good spot. You could take that out if you wanted, um, so you wouldn't have to cut around it, but you know. 
whatever, I cut around mine. Now, um, this next step kind of brings up the first issue that I have with this system. This is the front half. Now obviously I have it in two halves because I want to use my back seats 99% of the time. Um, but the way that I built this, wanting it in the fewest amount of pieces, I can't put this or the bottom section in or out without taking the plywood off the top uh, because the main reason I built this is to have the widest possible platform to sleep on. Now because of that it won't fit through the bolstering on the side these interior panels. You can't just pull it out. You have to take the panels off and pull it out. Um, so that is not my biggest problem with it. The biggest problem is the next thing we're going to talk about. Okay. So I have that in there all the way up to the um, front armrest. Uh, the problem with that is for it to fit, the front seats have to be pushed up so that the backs of the seats are even with, that, with the back of that armrest. Um, I'm not a super tall guy, I'm about 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 and these Jeeps don't have the most legroom ever. So I have to put the seat um, all the way back, which is further back than the front armrest. So I can't put the front platform in. I, when we did our last trip, we had the platform sitting up um, in the back, and then when we parked, we scooted the seats forward and dropped it down. Now that's not a huge problem except for when we did it, it was dark, it was cold, it was raining, and of course we had gear stuffed underneath it and on top of it that we had to remove, put the platform in place, and then put all the gear back. So I need to come up with a system um, that uh, will allow me to keep that down, or most of it down, and then hopefully just slide that driver section into place. My wife's side, we can put the seat back um, and meets the uh, sleeping platform and she's still got enough room. It's not even close for enough room for me um, to sit in there and drive. So I'm gonna come up with some kind of a system um, so that the driver's side can just fold down into place after the fact or maybe hinge down or some pins, I don't know. We'll worry about that in the future. So there is that. Let's start putting the rest of the boards in. Again, I'm not going to screw these down. Um, I suppose technically you didn't have to, wouldn't have to screw them down at all, except for I feel like if you were on bumpy roads, it, the boards would rattle a lot. I only used a few screws to put it together, and that was fine. Now these are the the very front corners. They go behind the seats, and underneath you can see I put a hole here, and then I just put a slot in the top because these are hinged, um, and I needed something so that I could grab a hold it and, and pull it up. And I didn't want to use a handle, obviously, because it's going to stick up and that's where we're going to sleep. So finger hole, it worked great. One. Two. Pop these in place there. Now this is really where the um, the fact that uh, I took the bottom seats out because let's see if we can get a better camera um, angle. So we've got the uh, here's the hinges, and I'm not going to screw them together. Sorry. So this would just fold up like that. Um, so there's no seat down here. You look directly down here. That is just floorboard. Um, so that worked out really well because. When it was nasty and dark and cold and raining, all we had to do was we hopped up inside here. I'm going to hopefully try and do this justice. Flip this up, swung around, dropped our cold, wet, dirty feet down here onto these uh, floor mats, kicked our shoes off, came back around, 
and closed it and we were good to go. Now, although we got in from the side doors, um, I also wanted us to be able to get in and out from the back door. So um, this is an access panel right here and there's actually a safety switch in here that is a manual lock unlock button for the, the back hatch. Um, it is not a hatch open button or hatch release as some people um, think. But um, so I just um, put a nut in there, drilled a, a hole, uh, used a brass grommet on some two inch nylon webbing so I can pull this down and close it. Uh, at some point I also want to take this whole panel off and find the, the actual release mechanism for either the window or the hatch and kind of make a, a DIY release. I'll, I'll kind of uh, probably pull a rope um, up through here so that I can just pull it and it'll pop the latch and then I can push this open if I want to get out the back as well as getting out the side door. So my Explorer actually has, um, you can pop the glass open via the remote control, which this does not. Um, so all I had to do was pop the glass from the button, push it open, reach out and unlock the hatch. Um, and it already had a grab bar on the inside. This has a, a pole here, but you can't use it once you're already inside because this um, butts right up to it. So, so that you guys might find that find that interesting. So I feel like that's pretty straightforward. Um, you guys are probably wondering about uh, my upholstery job here now. Obviously, I didn't want to just leave bare plywood, so I figured I was going to cover it with vinyl or. Uh, auto upholstery carpet or something like that. So I was at the fabric store and I saw these awesome outdoor themed fleece prints and it got me thinking, it's like, you know what? Why in the world, why are we doing this to begin with? You know, why do we take all the time, energy and the money to do this to vehicles and and what what's going on? Well, we're doing it to, we're doing it to explore, we're doing it to have an adventure. We're doing it to express ourselves. We're doing it to have fun. So I feel like sometimes, <sighs> mosquito, um, we take we take this all a little bit too seriously. And you know, in a Jeep, a four-wheel drive Jeep that's going to cruise some back roads to have two adults spend the night in the rain or whenever sleeping in the back. Why wouldn't you have black and white fleece with trees and wildlife on it? I mean, come on. So that's, that's why we did that, and I just stapled it on up underneath, and uh, I think it looks great. I really like it. Um, the plywood is, this is half inch plywood. I think you could probably get away with three eighths, maybe even quarter inch, um, especially if it's just one person. I used half inch just because I had bought a bunch of half inch plywood for projects I was doing around the house. Um, it's all two by sixes, except for I did use a couple chunks of two by four in the front, and um, after I stop this video, when I pull it apart, I will take some still shots of that to show you guys where they go, and I will make note of it in the drawings. And you could do it all with a handsaw and a hand drill. There's nothing crazy um, about how I did it. There is one notch in a 2x6 so that the 2x4 could slot in it, um, but you don't need any special tools for that. that that was the only thing that was kind of a goofy thing. Everything else is just butt joints, basically. So, um, I hope that all made sense for you all. And um, please, if you have any questions or um, ways that I could improve this, especially with that front driver's seat um, driving situation, please feel free to leave a comment down below or email me at uh, hawkeyescountworks at gmail.com. The plans will be at the end of the video. Um, you can pause that if you want email me and I will be happy to scan you a copy of them or you can check us out on uh, Instagram or Facebook Hawkeye Skunk Works um, across all social media and I will have pictures of the plans um, posted on there as well so again thank you for checking this video out please if you enjoyed it give the video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and set those notifications it really helps helps us out and um, as always have a good day we'll see you later bye